We're joined right now by head coach of the Shockers, Greg Marshall, student athletes Fred Van Vliet and Ron Baker. We'll ask Coach Marshall to make an opening statement first, please, then we'll take questions for the student athletes. Okay, um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to congratulate uh, Notre Dame and tremendous, tremendous team. Um, the, the best offensive team we've seen all year, uh, hands down. And uh, they played a heck of a game and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them as, as they get the chance to move on especially uh, Coach Bray with what he's been through this week. Uh, tremendous guy. Um, and then, you know, we'll get into it, but I appreciate the, the warrior spirit that these guys, after we took the one-point lead, they, they came out with a barrage of threes. It, it was very quick, it was the way they built that lead, but these guys never quit. They fought to the bitter end, and it was a great year for us, so really proud of them. We're looking for questions for the student athletes from Wichita State. Questions for the student athletes only at this time. If you have a question for our student athletes, please raise your hand. The microphone attendant will make their way to you. We'll do one in the center section, just to the right of the aisle first. Please remember your name and media outlet. Kevin Haskin, Topeka Capital Journal. Fred, when you got that lead, did you feel like you guys had gotten over a hump, given how big the deficit you overcame? And then what did you think about Notre Dame just taking off from there? Yeah, we felt good, obviously, um, battling back. We started off to have the first half terrible with uh, being down, was 18 to 5 or whatever it was. So battling all the way back, we wanted to open up the second half in a good way, and we did that. So, uh, you know, we opened up the right way, and then, I mean, like Coach said, they got they made some threes, but I think we gave them too many easy looks inside. I mean, we can live with the threes, but they, they just shot layup after layup, it seemed like. And uh, we just, we just for whatever reason, couldn't stop them. So, uh, you know, we just wanted to battle, try to keep battling throughout the game. Um, just keep running them off, but they're pretty hot, uh, knocking down shots. So give them all the credit. Another question in that same area, right of the center aisle. For, uh, <clears throat> for Ron and Fred, Bob Lutz from the Wichita Eagle. What makes them so difficult to guard? Is it the fact that they can shoot threes and also pound it inside? We'll ask Ron to take that question first, please, then Fred. Uh, anytime you can stretch the floor with four basically guards that can shoot it like they can, it's it's tough to defend the screen and roll. Uh, their five man was doing a good job of screening and rolling quickly to the rim, and we were doing our best to pinch the floor, and uh, they were doing a good job of either passing to the roller or uh, skipping across court and knocking down shots, and they just shot the ball, shot the cover off of it. In reality. Uh, Never seen a team shoot it like they, they have today. Fred, same question to you, please. Yeah, I mean, they stretched the floor with guys who could shoot it. I mean, in a similar way that we did. We made the shots against Kansas. Tonight we didn't. Uh, they did. So anytime you got four guys out there that are knocking down threes, you know, with a five man that's going to roll and work hard and get, get uh, points in the paint, you know, it puts pressure on the defense. And uh, we got a lot of open looks ourselves. Um, and we just didn't knock them down. So like I said, give them credit for making theirs. Continuing with questions for the student athletes, one all the way in the back of the room in the center. Paul Solentrop, Wichita Eagle. Fred, after you were down 18-5, then you kind of sh shut them down a little bit and recovered. What were you doing right at that point in the first half? Uh, we just got off our heels. Um, you know, we got some deflections, got a steal or, or two. Um, we're able to just get a stop, you know. Um, I think we came out on our heels a little bit just eager to, you know, trying to anticipate what they were going to do. But after that, after they made their first run, we started getting back to the way we usually play defense. And they missed some open looks as well, so that helps. And we were able to get out in transition and get some buckets. If you have a question for the Shockers student athletes, please raise your hand. Follow up back in the center. Paul Solentrop, Wichita Eagle. Fred, that kind of, after you took that lead in the second half, uh, Demetrius Jackson really got going. I think he scored one layup after after Wichita State made a shot. Uh, how do you describe how he kind of turned the game around? Well, he shot the ball really well. And our game plan going there was trying to, you know, he's so quick off the dribble, just pick him up at the three-point line. And, you know, if he makes four or five of them, that was our game plan going into the game. And, I mean, he made, what did he make? He made four of them. So uh, that was, I think that was a guy that we were, we would let take that shot, and he knocked him in. Um, similar to the way they played Evan last week, um, and he knocked him in. So give him all the credit. 
Continuing with questions for the student athletes, if you have one, please raise your hand. There's one in the center section to the left of the aisle. Salem News, Salem Mass, Mike Grenier. Does Pat Connaughton surprise you for being a 6'4 guy? He rebounds so well, and I know he's known for his three-pointers, but tonight he, he drove the ball. Ron first, then Fred, please. I'm sorry, who? Pat? Oh, the 24, right, right, okay. Uh, yeah, I, he's, he's one of those kids that's kind of in between a 3-4, uh, but he handles it like a 3, and he can bruise with you down low. Um, obviously, he can shoot it really well, so... Like I said earlier, he, he was doing a good job of spacing the floor on the weak side, and he was giving uh, Jackson and uh, Grant the opportunity to come off the ball screen and either hit the roller or pass it to him for the shot. So a deadly weapon, obviously, uh, that can stay in the corner or even post up for occasionally. Fred, same question. To answer your question, no, uh, he doesn't surprise us. Uh, you know, we watch film, and you know, we respect him as a player. Uh, he's a heck of an athlete, and uh, not, he's probably the best shooter, and he just competes, so uh, he, had a, he had a pretty good game. In the left-hand section, all the way to the back, Bill. Uh, Bill Roden with the New York Times. Uh, this is for both of you. Um, I know it's fresh, but could you just uh, describe how you're feeling now, this run, just the, there's been a lot of emotion, there's been a lot of, you know, and just sort of how, you, how, you, how this has been for you and how you, you're feeling. Ron first, please, then Fred. Uh, deep down, I'm pretty upset. Um, I feel for our seniors, uh, Dekel and Darius, two guys that obviously deserve to move on and play Saturday. Um, I, I wish individually I could have done more to help my team win. Um, and just one of those games, uh, you, you got to get through. And we were unable to execute on the offensive end and defensive end in the second half. Brad, same question. It's been a heck of a ride, man. It's been a, a great year for us. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of fighting. Uh, got you know a bunch of new guys just bringing them along. But it's been fun. It's been a, a great ride for us. Obviously, right now, disappointed, hurt, tired, you know, exhausted. Uh, you know, like Ron said, just feel sorry for those seniors and. You know, you never want to end on a loss, but it happened. They had great careers, and I'm just happy to, to be able to have play with those guys and make some of these experiences. So um, overall, just disappointed, hurt, but at the same time, recognizing that we had a great year and uh, just want to celebrate with these seniors. Likely the final question for the student athletes from Wichita. Left section, left of the aisle. Jason Marks, KGSO for Ron and the Fred. Describe this season in one word. Ron first, please, then Fred. Uh, that's, I'm not an English major. That's pretty tough for me. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Any word that describes uh, new people, a lot of new people come together and finishing the season like we have today. No one, no one expected us to be where we are right now. When you got eight, nine new faces coming into your program, you know, a lot of people probably didn't expect us to make it this far. Fred, please. I would just say, I mean, shockers, just that defines us who we are as, as men and people. We fight. Uh, we haven't been perfect all year. We don't shoot the ball well all the time, but we fight. We compete. I mean, we were down 20 or whatever today, just kept fighting rallying back, having fun throughout the process. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun to, to play with these guys. We'd like to thank Fred and Ron for joining us here in the main interview room. Job, Dave. Fred and Ron are going to head back toward the locker room and join their teammates. The Wichita locker room is still open at this time. Mm. We're now looking for the first question for Coach Marshall. There's one in the center section right of the aisle. Uh, Bob Lutz, Wichita Eagle. They had they were so good at the outset of the game, and then for a long stretch of time, your defense kicked in, held them down, and then suddenly another flash fire. What was it like trying to prepare for these guys? And then uh, in the course of the game, what did you see happen uh, in those sudden changes? Bob, just from studying the film of them, you could tell uh, what a dynamic offensive team they were. There's no there's nobody that you can cheat off of. I mean, each one of those five guys, and they play a lot of minutes, um, 
are, are dangerous. Uh, Demetrius Jackson is so good off the bounce, and we were able to keep him out of, out of the paint and, and away from the rim for the most part, but then he knocks down four threes. Um, at the beginning of the game, it started with him. He, he made two of the first three threes to begin the game. We were on our heels a little bit, 18 to five. Wasn't happy in that first media timeout. And then we just started to play. And we started to chip away and chip away and got it to three at the half and then took the lead. And then same thing, the same guy, really. Uh, he makes two threes. He gets to the rim, as Paul mentioned. I mean, and, and there were other guys. I mean, I'm not, not just saying those, but, but Demetrius Jackson, I think, was the catalyst today and uh, knocking down those shots. And he, he did it at the beginning, and then he did it after we took the one-point lead. So I've never seen a, a one-point lead get out of hand so quickly, and it did tonight because of their firepower. In the left-hand section toward the back. Greg, Bahi Gregorian, Kansas City Star. It, along those same lines, it, when, you, when you climb back from that kind of deficit and you get ahead, I mean, it, it, does that usually go one of two ways? I mean, it, does a team sometimes buckle when you, when, you, when you do that? And were you surprised they were able to you know, kind of do that right away back at you guys? You know, really, it can go one of two ways, or it can be a seesaw affair. I mean, you, you, you've seen enough college basketball. We could have pushed it out to 10, and maybe it's a different game like we were able to do against Kansas, or uh, they can do what they did, which is go on an incredible run. Um, or it could then be a seesaw affair where the lead changes multiple times. That's just college basketball tonight. It was their night, and they shot it much better than we did. We had some good looks now. We had some good looks. Ron and Fred and Takeo had some really good looks. We just didn't make them. And uh, they made theirs, and uh, they shot it great, especially in the second half and at the beginning of the first half. In the center section in the back. Paul Solentrop, Wichita Eagle. Great, you had a you know real emotional weekend, emotional game Sunday, and kind of a quick turnaround. Did that take anything out of this team, just the circumstances? I, I don't know, Paul. I mean, I, I don't particularly like the fact that uh, we had a less days to prepare than Notre Dame. That's not an excuse. I just I, I don't I don't like the pod system or whatever they call it, where you play Sunday night, you get that get back late, and then you're back on the road on Tuesday when the other team has an extra day plus less travel. And then on top of that, our plane was late uh, to pick us up on Tuesday, so we're sitting around, sitting around. We finally practiced about 8:30 for an hour and 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 fed the guys about 10 o'clock. So I didn't like that. It's not good, but that has nothing to do with the game. The better team won tonight. Um, and as I mentioned, Mike Bray is one of the great guys in the business. And if you got to lose in the NCAA tournament, might as well be to a guy like him. If you have a question for Coach Marshall, please raise your hand. There's another one in the center section, just to the right of the aisle. We'll use the right-hand microphone for that. Kevin Haskin, Topeka Capital Journal. Greg, can you kind of just put a overall feeling on this season, these guys? kind of acted as if maybe they overachieved just a little bit, but I don't know how you feel. Well, I, I think, Kevin, when you can go through a season like we did with five veterans, that's it, five guys that have played Division One basketball, uh, the, rest, the rest of the eight scholarship guys are, are new. You can be ranked all year long. Um, you can win your regular season title, 17 and one. You can beat Kansas to go to the Sweet 16. I mean, it's one of the one of the top teams in the country. So I think I don't there's no way you can be disappointed in this year. Um, we lost to a better team tonight that was playing really well. I mean, I just watched five or six games of, of, of uh, them and I, the last game I watched today was was Duke in the uh, I think semifinals of the ACC tournament and they were up 15, 20 points against Duke. And Duke cut it down and, and, and had a chance to, to make a game of it. But it ended up being 10 or 12, whatever. So this team's playing really well. When you, when you win the ACC tournament in Greensboro and beat Duke in North Carolina back to back, you're playing well. And they're hot. And uh, they've got a great system. And again, I, I, I tip my hat to them. And, and, uh, uh, but I'm going to go back with my head held high, too. Uh, I love these kids. They're wonderful human beings. Great students, great people, um, and they represent our fine university in a first-class way. In the back in the center, Paul. Paul Solentrop, Wichita Eagle. Greg, earlier you had indicated Ron has a decision to make about what he's going to do. If he's going to come back next year. How's that process work, and, and what's your role in 
uh, helping him with that? Well, we have to gather information for him. Uh, there's a NBA, and, and Fred has the same decision to make. I mean, anybody uh, with, with the credentials that those kids have uh, can, can put their name in the hat, and, and then you, you ask the NBA folks to give you uh, an advisory sample of where certain teams may see you, and, and then that, they come back to you, and then you have to just make a decision. Uh, Ron did that last year. So uh, I anticipate them both doing that. I don't know when that happens, but it, it can start now, I think. But I don't know how quickly that you turn that around. Um, um, I like what Ron said up here when I heard him say that, you know, he felt bad for the seniors. You know, he didn't act like it was his last game. He felt bad for the seniors. That was a, at least a little positive that I took from that. I don't know if you guys caught that, but I did. Um, so, you know, we just we help them, we advise them. I mean, if either one of them are lottery picks, uh, you, you probably have to consider it very strongly. Uh, if you're mid, midway through the second round, chances are about 50-50, you never play a second in the NBA. So there's only X amount of slots. You're a big NBA guy, you know that. They've got to make some really tough choices. Ron will have his degree because he redshirted. He's already finished. Uh, Fred will have uh, a, a, some more schooling to do. But they're both great players. And regardless, and here's, a, here's the point that I'm going to make to them, regardless if they go to the NBA or Europe today, tomorrow, next year, they're going to be successful. And they don't, they don't really understand that right now because they're thinking, man, I can be a lottery pick. I can make millions of dollars. And that's probably at the forefront. But it doesn't matter whether either one of them plays a second in the NBA. They're going to be successful. If you have a question for Coach Marshall, please raise your hand. Any further questions for Coach? We'd like to thank Coach Marshall for joining us in the main interview room. He's going to head back toward the locker room.